So now let's go ahead and look at some examples about hypothesis testing. We'll start off with the traditional method, which means we're using a critical value. Um, here is the test statistic for testing a mean with an unknown standard deviation. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and just for clarity's sake, I needed to save room when typing this, and so I wrote the division in the denominator to look like one line, but a lot of people get confused by it. So I wanted to write it out, that we're taking x bar minus mu, and that difference, the numerator, is divided by a denominator that consists of the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So I mean, it might help to kind of look at it with parentheses but it's the exact same formula off to the left. And just to drill in the point, I wanted to share what it is in words one more time. So we're taking our sample average and subtracting the population average, but we need that in context, so we need it relative to the sample size, I'm sorry, to the standard deviations, which is sample standard deviation. We don't have a population or we'd be doing a Z test. And notice this says we have a T test and we'll divide by the square root of the sample size. So now let's go ahead and read over the problem. A nutritionist claims that the mean daily consumption of sodium for females is more than 2,750 milligrams. A survey of 26 females found a mean of 2,892 milligrams with a sample standard deviation of 350 milligrams, use the traditional method. So that's how we know, whoops, sorry, that we're using the critical value. Now, notice this says a sample standard deviation. This problem could have worked if the word sample had not been given because the this sentence here is about the 26 females. So when it discusses their mean and standard deviation, it's only about the sample. But Aside from that, let's break it down a little bit further. So the nutritionist claims, so this is the part I need for filling in my first box, that the mean, so we know that mean stands for average or mu, and it's always equal in the first box. Continue reading, and she said it's more than. More than uses the greater than symbol, and greater than goes in H1. And because she's already said that it's more than the 2,750, that's the number that goes into both of those boxes, and I wrote way too big. <laughs> okay, so now looking at all the other information we have from the problem, n is 26, our sample size, x bar is 2892, our sample average, s is 350, our sample standard deviation, and our significance level of alpha is 0.05. So first thing I need to do is find my test statistic, and I'm using the formula of t equals x bar minus mu all over the quantity s divided by the square root of n. So filling it in for our numbers, we said that 2892 is our sample average minus the mean of 750. Remember, often h naught, our null hypothesis, we have what mu equals. This is all over 350, our sample standard deviation, which itself is divided by the square root of n, the sample size of 26. So entering that into your calculator, and again, maybe using parentheses to start and stop the top, and parentheses to start and end the bottom might help. I got 2.06874. And so going two digits past the decimal, with rounding, I've got 2.07 for my test statistic. Now I'm ready to find my critical value. We'll be using the t-table, row 25, column 0.05 for one tail. Remember, n minus 1 for degrees of freedom. One tail, because I just have a one directional arrow, and the t-table, because we don't have a population standard deviation. I find the number 1. 0.708, and remember, because I have a right tail test, I need to keep that a positive number. So my critical value is 1.708. Now I need to decide whether I reject or fail to reject H0. So for part C, I look at the bell-shaped curve, list my critical value, this creates my critical region, and remember, since I have a right tail test, my critical region is to the right. Anything to the right of that would be rejected. And now I compare my test statistic 
which 2.07, the test statistic, does fall in the critical region. It is to the right of my cutoff value for a right tail test. So we reject H0. Then I go ahead and look at if my claim is H1 and I reject H0, this means that my final conclusion will start with the sample data supports the claim that, and then I finish with the mean daily consumption of sodium for females is more than 2,750 milligrams. Don't forget we're looking for some key parts. Which parameter are you discussing? The mean. What is the context about that mean? It's the daily consumption of sodium for females. What is the claim about that mean? That it is more than, but specifically it's more than what value? 2,750.